Hey, good morning, crypto trading brothers and sisters. Right. So, quick update today. First of all, you see, I actually got myself together yesterday. Got out to the barber. Barber cleaned me up. Gave me a flat top. I guess that's a, a style of hair that is coming back in. I've only had a flat top once before in my life. It's taken me a little to get used to, but I guess it's okay. It's probably hard for the barber to do on a big old round head like mine. But, uh, anyways, I can roll out of bed and come do these videos now. Let's talk about what's going on in our markets today. Uh, I like to talk about the crypto space, but we have to, in doing that, reference what's going on on the broader scene, specifically in our stock markets. And today it's all about the FOMC. The Fed comes uh, to the mic at 2.30 to do a press conference. And what we're looking for is for the uh, Fed to bolster the claims that they are going to tackle this inflation problem that snuck up on them. All right. And uh, of course, it really didn't sneak up on it on anybody, did it? I, I hope not. I mean, when you're running to the print, printing press to print as many dollars as you possibly can, you have to know inflation is going to be a problem. Anyways, the Fed, who has largely created this problem, also has a solution for it. How convenient in their back pocket. And uh, so what we're looking for is when the Fed comes and pulls up that solution from their back pocket, present it to the public. By and large, they will alleviate fears um, that are uh, existing in current market sentiment. And how they alleviate those fears is by saying, look, this is what we're going to do to tackle debt. This is what we're going to do to tackle inflation. And we're going to take these steps in the future to accomplish this. All right. And then the market breathes a big sigh of relief. The VIX goes down and we're off to the races again. All right. It's all about psychology, really. That's all this is all about. Um, so I expect at 230 when the Fed does their, um, what do I call it? Nah, I shouldn't be so disrespectful, should I? Uh, charades at the microphone, their act of accomplishing important things for this market and tackling debt and inflation, which they created. Um, by the way, it works the same way throughout our societies, our economic societies. And really, this is a big reason why I'm such a fan of blockchain and crypto. Not to get going on a rant here, but to get going on the rant, what crypto and blockchain technology more specifically allows the public to do is to become a part of the ownership in our econo uh, economies, really, and in our economic strategies. Because by owning uh, a crypto or these various blockchain networks, you, in essence, become part owner of that and you have a say in how that network operates and moves forward. And additionally, you have full transparency. Um, you can see, for instance, Etherscan, you can see what's in everybody's wallets, where those you know, wallets are moving to and who's moving what. Uh, you can see all of that. It's all transparent. And you also have a large say in what goes on in that network. Right now, our current structure, financial structures, which are crumbling, by the way, um, they just don't allow that transparency. Has anybody ever successfully audited the Fed, a big private bank? No, and it won't happen. All right. So it just all has to come down and we have to build a new system that is fair for the people and not just the oligarchs and those that are in power, those with all the money. He who owns the gold is the ruler, right? So the Fed is the ruler. And uh, 
I digress. <laughs> Let's get back to this. All right. So Fed's going to come up to the microphone and they're going to say, this is what we'll do. We're going to, you know, we're going to tackle the inflation problem. We're going to tackle the debt. And uh, I expect the VIX to turn around and head back down because everybody is like, oh, they're going to solve it for us. You know, everybody looks to have an easy solution, right? They want the one quick fix. And if anything has shown that to us, it should have been 2020 and 2021, the age that we're currently in, where the authorities, whether that be political authorities, economic authorities, scientific authorities, people just want an easy solution. They don't want to have to do all the work, the hard work. Uh, it's like one person said, many people really don't want freedom because freedom means that you have to work hard and you have to be independent and independence is a lot of work you can't just rely on your authorities for the solution um, but in our society today everybody wants to do that they want the easy way out all right they want the one quick fix and the stock market is no different all right, so the Fed is going to offer us the quick fix. And we've already seen that uh, Janet Yellen uh, said yesterday, that if we don't raise that debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion, the U.S. could be in its first ever defaults. All right, so the fear-mongering campaign was in full swing at that point, and it looks like it worked because Senate passed uh, that bill to uh, increase the debt ceiling uh, by 2.5 trillion and now we're going to work on this supposed runaway inflation that somehow snuck up on us right so once we tackle that and the way the fed i believe is going to do that let's jump over to our dollar chart because i want to show you this see this bullish triangle the dollar is getting stronger Remember how I said in technical analysis, you can often read the headlines before they happen. What is this chart telling us about the dollar? It tells us the dollar is growing stronger. What does that mean? That means the Fed is going to probably come out today at 2.30 when they get in front of the microphone. And they probably are going to make some strong statements about tackling debt and tackling inflation. Now, whether they do that or not, actually doesn't matter to market psychology. What the market wants to see is that the Fed is getting serious about this incredible problem. And then all of their psychological anxieties will be alleviated to some degree because we have an authority and control that's going to take care of this ominous problem for us. All right. So then, well, that will strengthen the dollar if if we talk about uh, you know tackling inflation that means the dollar gets stronger against other global currencies correct and so with the dollar getting stronger and the vix dropping which i imagine it will do around 230 watch this guys this this will play out perfectly what happens to our indexes well it doesn't necessarily mean that our indexes will go up in fact typically or oftentimes i should say not typically when the dollar grows stronger it is an inverse correlation to the markets because right now what are the markets doing they're uh, factoring in this variable of inflation into the prices right so with inflation that price is factored into the larger indexes and that is exactly why they are so high, all right? And so if the dollar grows stronger, that inverse correlation means that we are taking out, we are extracting from the indexes that inflationary price variable to some degree. Now, it hasn't happened yet, but with the Fed talking about uh, doing this, and I think the first date they actually set to increase the, the, the rates is uh, June of 2022. So a full at least six and a half months away um 
maybe seven, depending on when in June they do that. But still, this will play into market psychology. And I don't think, you know, with the dollar getting stronger, I expect the, the indexes to either go sideways, all right, until they test this bottom line support on our channels. Remember, I said all of the indexes have existed in this channel. We have lived inside of here since March of 2020. So it's been a minute, all right? And uh, of course, the Dow has broken down and out. I will talk about this pattern, which is not, it's just a potentiality at this point. But we have broken down below this channel for the first time since March of 2020, all right? And I do expect the, the S&P and the NASDAQ to follow suit. And so I think with the Fed coming into the uh, uh, the picture here, it depends on how good their show is in front of the microphone and the words that they say and how they articulate their vision, vision for the future. It's all, in my opinion, kind of a show, right? But that's what psychology is. Security is an illusion. Uh, security is really just a feeling, right? Any security no matter what you're talking about there is no such thing as absolute security but it's a matter of convincing people that there is security in whatever steps or actions you are taking all right and that's what this is all about it's all psychology here and once you guys realize that so yes what i'm saying in, in essence is you have to be somewhat of a conspiracy theorist to, to be a good trader because you have to understand um that this is more than about actual tangible action uh markets move on psychology so once the fed bolsters our uh psychology and alleviates anxieties that riddle the market currently. And there's more than just one reason for that. It's not just inflation and our debt. It's this Omicron variant and other factors that are playing out globally. Um, and of course, much of the media that I've seen is saying that the Omicron var variant is spreading rapidly. And so there's lots of red headlines that are uh, causing other fears to pop up as well. All that to say, I do think the Fed will come out strong against inflation and maybe they'll say a few things about our current debt as well. Whether the intention is there or not doesn't matter. It's the words that they articulate and how they say that that the market will read. All right. And then VIX goes down, dollar goes up. And in my opinion, the markets either continue sideways until they test this support or they will go down because with a strong dollar, that inverse correlation will start to play out eventually. And we test this support eventually, especially on the SPY and the NASDAQ. The Dow, we've already tested that and broken below. And let's talk about this head and shoulders pattern that I've spotted here. Uh, potential head and shoulders. It hasn't played out yet. I'm not saying it's going to. But we have a left shoulder over here, a head, and a right shoulder. And if this does play out, if we do continue down, we will test this neckline. Doesn't mean we're going to break it, but generally we do. A head and shoulders pattern, I don't know what the percentage is, but the probability suggests that this will play out. If it plays out, we measure from the top of the head to the neckline, and we get our target down. Let's go there and see what this is long ways down guys uh and the reason why i have the target drawn so this is really our target right here at thirty-two thousand. the reason why i say we could go lower is let's let's uh, zoom out here i've got a big gap down here right here at 28 to 29,000. huge gap all right and we're probably going to fill that all these gaps that come up in the market 90 plus percent of the time they are eventually filled and so again this doesn't all happen right away this won't happen like within weeks but it'll be months and into probably 
uh, mid next year, which makes total sense, right? Because that's when the Fed is actually talking about increasing interest rates, making the dollar stronger and extracting price inflation from the market, which will drop the prices. All right. Now I say all of this because I'm generally focused in on the crypto space and how this spills over into our crypto space. And what is that going to do for our crypto space? Well, right now, for time being, I really don't think it's going to play too much of an impact on Bitcoin. All right. We are at major support, as I've stated many times, and it would really take a, a big flub in the uh, Fed's statements at the microphone today. If they don't articulate correctly and they increase fear versus what they're should be trying to do is alleviate fear then maybe we drop down a little bit further but this is all big support and like i said it and i exaggerate when i say this but it would take something pretty apocalyptic for us to come all through these four or five levels of support but if we did we'd be in big trouble i just don't see that happening at this point i think we are very close and near to a bottom in the crypto space I do believe that we are going to see a massive bull cycle into February, maybe even March, maybe all the way through May. And I do believe that many altcoins are going to 2x, some are going to 3x, and some have the potential to 4 or 5x from this point right here. So if it's me and my Substack subscribers know that I am doing this, and they know what I'm buying and how much I'm in cash. And you guys, by the way, can feel free. If you want to go over to Substack and peek behind the curtains, you pay $50 for the month. You can see what trades I'm in, how much of my portfolio is designated for cash, and um, you know how much of each crypto I hold. When I sell, you follow my trades, basically. That's, that's what you can do. But for $50 this month, you can do that and view all the archives as well. Um, but you guys and Substack know that I am starting to buy and you know what I'm in and where I'm in it, how much I'm in it, when I plan to sell, etc., etc. Um, and I do think, as I've stated here on TradingView and wherever you get this video, um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, you guys know that I think we're near a bottom. Bitcoin is showing me that. Ethereum, let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum has just dropped below the neckline. The first time since October, the mid-October, have we dropped below this neckline. Now, we have not confirmed that yet. This is just a drop now, and I expect that to change. We could come down to this resistance, and this, this would make sense in correlation with the time frame. If we come down to this resistance area or, or this support area, uh, this will be right around the Fed time the Fed is speaking, markets let's say the markets pop crypto space pops everything pops for the time being not talking the longer view just for today maybe tomorrow uh fed says some good things alleviates all those fears makes people feel good and we have that nice warm feeling inside our soul and then uh ethereum comes back up above this trend line and that's kind of what i expect the price action to look like all right and so um, we, guys, we may not really see any upwards tra trajectory in the crypto space until next week. All right. We could be on the fence for that long. And uh, it's a good time of accumulation. It's a good time, in my opinion, to be buying this market up. All right. In another video, I'll talk about some altcoins that I see lots of potential in but for the time being we're almost to our 20 minutes and i just wanted to kind of give you a general idea of what the holdup is what we're waiting for and when market psychology starts to turn the corner and change and become uh bullish again in the crypto space so this is all how it's playing out we'll update you again maybe tomorrow until then you guys stay safe on your trades out there be careful, especially in the altcoin space. Make wise decisions and best of luck to you.